Now imagine waking up to a total blackout, not only in your area, but the entire country. Back to the dark ages. Well, that may just be the possibility if the country's electricity crisis isn't dealt with soon. South Africa's power grid is under immense pressure due to a backlog of maintenance and mismanagement. ESCOM's average plant age of 40 years means breakdowns are commonplace now and unpredictable. It's amounted to as much as 20 gigawatt loss in generation capacity. Now, this added to increasing demand is a recipe for disaster. Let's discuss this with Tina Boyson from the University of Stellenbosch Engineering Department. Tina, thank you very much for your time. Just to be frank, is ESCOM a lost cause at this point or it can still be saved? Afternoon, Mufundo. Um, ESCOM is definitely not a lost cause. Um, I'm pretty sure it can be saved, but we're going through a difficult time. So the aspect that you mentioned is the blackout. So I can quickly explain to you what the vulnerability of the grid means, if you want. Essentially, the grid is made up of generation plants, and then there's us as consumers, which makes up the demand. The generation plants is the supply part of it. And in between, there's a grid of distribution and transmission networks. Now, what happens at the moment is the generation plants are producing electricity, but we're obviously using more than what they can produce. If something is not done by or because of that, so if, if ESCOM just leaves the playing field as it is, we will use all the capacity that the generators can produce and start to surpass it. When that happens, the generators will turn off. The reason this happens is because the whole grid, the whole system works on a 50 hertz cycle. Everything is synchronized. All the plugs here down in Stellenbosch, Cape Town, Johannesburg, Pretoria, even up into the bordering countries. If that synchronicity is not maintained, we will have short circuits on the line and the grid will burn out essentially and we'll have damage to our generation plants. So what ESCOM is doing is they're not generating enough. So they can't up the generating part, the supply part. They have to cut the demand side. And um, if they don't do it, as I say, the whole system will collapse because one by one, the generators will protect themselves and turn off, which means we'll have a complete blackout. If that happens, it will happen in a matter of seconds, 30 to 60 seconds, the whole grid will collapse. If the whole grid collapses, we need to start afresh to generate that 50 hertz synchronicity. The only way to do that is to start one plant by one plant by one plant, gradually ramping up one by one plants to ensure that the synchronicity is maintained. And that could take two weeks. So you can imagine at the moment, we're sat with a few load shedding um, events per day, which is horrible, of course. But the alternative is that we sat without power for as much as two weeks. And this has happened in other countries. Many other countries have had blackouts affecting 600 million of people. So countries like India, which were in Canada, the States, Brazil, all these countries have had blackouts. And what ESCOM has done is by luck, what, and also by skill, they've actually steered us clear of a blackout. So even though these, um, these rolling blackouts or load shedding is a, a massive pain to the economy and all of us personally, it's really all we can do. Um, mm -hmm. We have a, a generation plant Average age is 40 years. There's not much you can do with that. Now, before we get to the average plant and perhaps this whole conversation around nuclear, just from hearing what you're saying, I know that many analysts are of the view that now perhaps the responsibility should, should come to us citizens, where perhaps if they cannot manage the supply, we need to reduce the demand ourselves and just realize that electricity has become a very scarce resource. What can we do in our homes? That's a very good question. Thank you, Fuller. The As I said, it's either generating more or we're using less. So in, we're in the process of generating more through uh, renewable resources that are being signed up. They will not be very reliable because it's weather dependent. Wind and solar depends on weather. And in fact, England had to revert back to coal power stations recently. But let's talk about what we can do. What you can do as a citizen of this country is to ensure that you don't use a lot of electricity. And the biggest biggest thing that consumes electricity by far in your household is that single element in your geyser. That single element of your geyser is responsible for 30 to 40 percent of your household consumption. So the way to reduce that is to turn the geyser off before you use water, before you need hot water, and to only turn the geyser on two hours or an hour before you need hot water. If you do that, you're already saving between 20 and 30 percent of the household electricity. Other things are Obviously, you can do light replacements, but that's really a drop in the bucket. It's not a lot. Um, the biggest thing is, as I say, generating heat, 
generating uh, cool air, so anything that takes away energy and adds energy in terms of thermal energy, those are the big spenders. So if we can cut down on those, that'll uh, already make a big difference. No, we can most certainly all do that. But back to management now. We've heard of the aging infrastructure, but now to management. There are calls by at least two organizations or lobby groups. You've got NUM as a union. You've now got BBC Black Business Council. They're calling for Andre the Rector and his board to step down. And basically what BBC is saying is that, you know what, this board is overwhelmed. Andre is out of his debt. What is your take on that? Can we attribute all that is currently happening to ESCOM, to him, or we should apportion at the very least partly to him, that maybe it is overwhelming? Yeah, this is just me personally speaking. I can't speak on behalf of anybody else, but from my personal point, point of view, there's very little you can do with an old vehicle. If somebody passes you an old vehicle, all you can do is you can ensure that you keep it running as far as you can, ensure that the brakes work when they need to break, and that's essentially what the control station or the National Control Center in Germiston is doing. They're cutting, supply, cut, cutting demand to ensure that supply is sufficient. I don't think Andre de Reiter and his team has much of an option. They're fixing ESCOM, and I really feel for them. They're doing their bit, and it's going to take time and money. It's easy to cut supply. It's really difficult to get more generation on board. I think the bigger problem is our politicians need to get on board and facilitate installation of more generation plants. And I don't mean coal. I mean, proper generation plants, mostly renewable sources, as mm. soon as possible. But, but speaking of renewables, you just spoke of England having gone back to baseload. They've gone back to coal, mm. and many argue that renewables are not all that dependable or reliable. If you're just solely yeah. going to have that, you need some sort of a mix that would probably speak of either coal or nuclear. Yes, exactly. And the nice thing is we have that backup power in, in ESCOM with a coal generation. So at the moment we're running, we have approximately 20 gigawatts of coal generation running, which can service the base load, uh, which we then can supplement with renewables and resources. So the nice thing about wind and solar are that they're mostly complementary. So the wind typically blows early mornings and late evenings, and then solar power is most available during the days. So if we can combine smart scheduling of, for example, water heaters or they eventually come electric vehicles, or if we can just turn on our massive loads during the middle of the day, we can very much match the supply of solar power and then we can augment that with wind power. As long as we have sufficient sources of wind and renewable sun power or solar power, uh, we should be able to sustain the grid. Mm -hmm. Let's hope they do actually move to this mix where it's always the talk that we're going to go to some sort of a mix, but it's not happening soon enough. We've got these blackouts. But thank you very much. That's Professor Tinas Boyson from the Stellenbosch University talking to us on the rolling blackouts currently.